intense, painful, cutthroat. These are just some of the ways that law school is described online. Even current law school students had this to say when asked to describe the experience in just six words. I liked myself more before this, and I should have been a plumber. But is it really that bad? You see, in pop culture and online, law school has earned this reputation as a place full of arrogant snobs who will do anything to get a leg up on the competition. A cutthroat environment where the professors try to embarrass you more than they try to teach you. A place where the material is almost impossible to understand and you're buried in work. Just how much of this is true? As a current law school student, I'm here to break down what's a misconception and what's an unfortunate truth about law school. The classes. One of the scariest parts of law school is the way that the classes are taught, or the Socratic method. The Socratic method is a teaching style where a student is asked progressively more difficult questions to prove that they have mastery of a topic and can think critically on that topic. This is often done through what are known as cold calls. A cold call is where a professor calls on a random student in the class and asks them a relatively simple question, typically on the previous night's reading. Then, they proceed to ask them more difficult questions related to that material. This continues until the student can no longer answer the questions, at which point the professor rephrases the question until the student gives up or can finally answer the question. Needless to say, this teaching method can be extremely nerve-wracking, especially for students who haven't been exposed to it in the past. But is it really as bad as people make it out to be? Well, that depends. If you did the reading and you're good at thinking on your feet, then you have absolutely nothing to worry about. But even if you aren't that good at thinking on your feet, you probably shouldn't be too stressed about cold calls. In reality, professors go extremely easy when they're cold calling students, and some professors hardly use them at all. The days of a hard-nosed professor going until a student cries are few and far between. I won't say that they don't exist because I firsthand experienced a professor making several students cry, but that was the exception, not the rule. In my personal experience, professors will cold call the first week or two of class until they've gone through everybody, and they just do this to scare you a little bit. After that, they basically stop doing it. Some will continue doing it, and some will do it kind of hard, but most of them don't really view it as a useful teaching tool. And in a lot of cases, it isn't. It's good at reinforcing material and getting you to think critically, but if you're in law school, you already think critically. Another reason not to worry about cold calls is that nobody faults you if you get the wrong answer. The only thing that people will fault you for is if you didn't prepare for class. And that leads me into the next major concern that people have with law school, the workload. One major difference between law school and most other types of school is the work distribution. There are almost no assignments in law school, but there is reading, and a lot of it. Most nights you will have 20 to 40 pages of assigned reading per class that you have the following day, and that reading will be dense. It'll be case law. Case law is just old cases that have already been decided. So you're going to be reading what judges wrote. And judges don't write the most comprehensible stuff out there. So if you typically read 20 pages in 20 minutes, you might need to bump up the amount of time that you set aside for law school reading. That is typically your only assignment, except in your writing classes, but those are a completely different thing. That doesn't mean that you get to stop there though. Most law school students also do what's known as briefing and what's known as outlining. Briefing is where you take each case that you read and then briefly summarize it. You take the facts of the case, the legal rule that you got out of the case, the holding that the court decided, and why they decided it, and you just put it all on a sheet of paper. Something to make that entire case that the judge wrote up easy for you to digest when you go back and study it later on. Outlining is taking all of your notes from classes and combining them with all of your briefs to create a list of legal rules that is easy for you to come back to and use as a study guide and a test aid because outlines you're allowed to print off and use during your exams. That's one thing about law school. All the exams are open book, but you shouldn't really be using your book for them. 
These two activities are done by almost every law school student, but they aren't required. They're just highly encouraged. Also highly encouraged are practice exams and practice problems and study groups and reviewing your outlines and reviewing your briefs and revising your outlines and revising your briefs and rereading all of the case law that you already read and watching breakdowns on that case law and watching Quinby videos. There's a lot that is highly recommended for you to do as a law school student. Should you be doing all of it? Now, that probably sounds overwhelming to most of you. There was a list of 10 things that I just said that are all highly recommended for you to do. And a lot of people tried to do all of them. And they burn out. One of the reasons why people think that the workload is so tough at law school is because you set your own workload. The only assignments that you actually have that you're required to do are your readings. And if I'm being honest, you can get away with not doing them sometimes. A lot of people have made it to law school based in large part on hard work. And when there's a lot of stuff that you can do to prepare for your finals at the end of the year, it can be kind of overwhelming and it can be kind of tempting to do all of it. But the workload is what you make it and the work is as difficult as you make it in law school. It can be as easy as skimming the readings and then just showing up for class or it could be as difficult as having every single minute of the day scheduled to do something. It's a trade-off and most people aren't used to having to make that decision themselves. I personally didn't do that much work during the actual semester. I showed up and paid a ton of attention in class and I did the readings most of the time. Some of the classes I got away with just watching the Quinby videos for the cases before the class started and that broke everything down for me. This will increase your stress during the class because if you're afraid that you're going to get cold called and you didn't actually read the case, it can be very stressful. Personally, I felt that that was a happy middle ground for me. If I did too much more, I felt diminishing returns. I felt like I wasn't getting as much out of the work that I was putting in. There were some people that felt that all of that stuff that they were doing really helped them, but by and large, the workload is what you make it. And it's as difficult as you want it to be or as light as you want it to be. And that depends on the type of person that you are. Which leads me to the next big misconception people have about law school. The people. There's a bit of a perception that law school is full of a ton of arrogant know-it-alls, rich snobs going to school on daddy's money, and cutthroat individuals who will do anything to get a leg up on the competition. And I'm going to be honest, those people do exist and they do go to law school, but it's not as bad as it's often made out to be. There are what are known as gunners, people gunning to get to the top of the class, and they'll do almost anything to get there. They think that they're smarter than you and they're not afraid to say it and show it. There are also plenty of people who come from money, but most of them aren't the snobby rich kid that you think of when you think of a high-end law school. They're normal people. In fact, law school in general is full of some of the most down-to-earth and coolest people I've ever met. It's full of people who are intelligent and not afraid to be themselves. They aren't afraid to have fun and do what they want. They know what they want out of life and they're there to go get it. Now, this is definitely something that depends on the school. I can definitely imagine that some of the higher schools have a different social dynamic than I have at Arizona State. But my experience is that the people that I go to law school with are some of my favorite people ever. And I literally just met these people a couple of months ago. By and large, the people at law school aren't as bad as they're typically made out to be. So law school isn't nearly as bad as it's made out to be. There are definitely some negatives, but there are plenty of positives too. And just like anything else in life, it is what you make it.